This was the camera that got me back into photography. What's up everybody? It is super rainy today, so I was looking for something that I could actually film inside and came up with this idea of just filming a what's in my camera collection kind of video. But in order to keep the video from getting too long, I thought I would just focus on one specific company. So for today's video, we'll just take a look at the Nikon cameras that are in my collection. You know, I first got into photography back in the mid 80s and by the early 2000s, I was kind of burned out. You know, I'd been doing it for about 20 years at that point. But in 2009, I ended up buying this, the Nikon D5000. I don't know what it was, but I just kind of fell in love with this camera. I paid like 750 bucks for this. I got it with a kit lens and that kit telephoto lens that's sort of plasticky 55 to 200 millimeter zoom. And I just started taking this with me everywhere. And right away, I just sort of found that passion again, you know. I actually found myself just enjoying photography, you know. I mean, I was just walking around in nature every single day with this camera taking pictures and I just started feeling like more and more inspired. You know, the D5000, it's not perfect in any way, shape, or form. Like, for example, I mentioned in the review, and by the way, I've already reviewed all of these cameras. Uh, they're all in a Nikon playlist. This video you're watching now is also in the same Nikon playlist. But um, the ergonomics on this camera are particularly bad. It's very narrow and very pinchy. Like, it's almost made like if you had pirate hooks for hands, you know? If you're Johnny Depp, you'll feel right at home with the D5000. But uh, if you have human hands, which I'm guessing a lot of you probably do, you might find this camera a little bit uncomfortable. But having said that, this was just one of my all-time favorite cameras. But aside from the ergonomics, it did have another problem. See, I picked up this Sigma 20mm f1.8 and I love this lens, but this lens is only manual focus on the D5000 because the D5000 doesn't have an autofocus motor. You know, so what that means if you're like new to photography, uh, it focuses, it auto focuses fine with modern lenses, but with older lenses like this Sigma, these lenses have a screw drive and this camera doesn't have that. So it has no way to actually focus the lens. And because of that, that's why I decided to pick up this, the Nikon D90. It felt a little more serious, not quite professional, but like just solid and like a bigger grip too. It actually feels like a lot more comfortable than the D5000. Just like the D5000, I kind of caught fire with this camera. Like I was just into photography, just day in, day out. That's all I was thinking about when I had this camera. Like um, back when I used to work my corporate job, which by the way, that's why I have a camera collection in the first place. I worked uh, this office job that was really depressing, but it paid really well. And so every day I would literally just be shopping for like used camera equipment. Um, I, <laughs> I would always have like uh, an Excel spreadsheet open on my desk of like actual work. So that's why if anybody walked by my office, like I would just pull that up really quick and just be acting like I'm focusing on it. And then the second they walked past, you know, I would just like minimize that spreadsheet and I would just be back on eBay or like KEH or something and just like scrolling through the listings like, trying to find camera equipment. But yeah, the D90, uh, I took this picture here, this picture of the bridge downtown. And I remember, I think this was probably like 2009 also, maybe early 2010. But at the time when I saw that picture, I felt like, oh wow, man, like I've, I've really accomplished something, you know? Whereas looking back on it now, it's just like, uh, I mean, I think the average person probably takes that exact same picture with a phone. But uh, at the time, you know, I felt pretty good about that. But a few years later, I was still a bit more curious about some of the older, like, professional cameras that I couldn't afford the first time around. So that's why I decided to check out this, the Nikon D100. The D100 is absolutely amazing in every way, but also absolutely, like, archaic 
in every way as well. D100 has a really good grip. It's kind of modeled after film cameras. I mean, like, especially if you look at the back of that, it just looks, I mean, minus the LCD screen, it just kind of looks like you're looking at a film camera. The D100 has a CCD sensor and it's just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, some of my all-time favorite images, and it's just everyday things, you know, it's just like nature and pets and stuff, but some of my all-time favorite pictures come from this camera. It just, it has a look that modern cameras don't have anymore. You know, in this day and age, we've sort of achieved, you know, we're constantly achieving this sort of technical perfection and every camera company's doing it, but we've done it at the cost of character. And the D100 is back when cameras actually had character. Like, those images just... As I always say on this channel, they just simply look different. They don't look like modern images. But having said that, the D100 does have some downsides. Um, this is literally the slowest camera I've ever used, ever. The D100 is so slow that when you take a picture on this camera, you know, like from the time that you actually press the shutter button until the time that it actually appears on the LCD screen, I could literally develop a roll of film in that amount of time. I mean, it feels like it takes half an hour. The D100, the processor is so slow and old on this camera, it's one of those cameras that, it's one of the only times on a camera that you actually see that little Microsoft style hourglass, like spinning, like turning over and over because it's thinking. Like, and it's not just when you take a picture, too. It's also like, you know, when you're just looking through your photos, if you're pushing play and you're just trying to scroll to the next image, you'll get that little hourglass on, like, every single image. I mean, it, <laughs> that's how slow the processor is on this camera. All right, the next camera that I got in my Nikon collection is this, the Nikon D60. The D60 is a camera that I've only had for about a year now. I got this last April for a YouTube video. Found it on eBay. I think I paid about like 40 bucks for it. There was a church in LA and they were just selling off stuff to like raise money for something. And I don't know, I got a really good deal on this. D60 is another one that continues the theme of CCD sensors. Like that's kind of, aside from the D90 and the D5000, that's kind of what I was looking for in all of these other ones is that CCD sensor. Uh, D60 has absolutely gorgeous images, you know? In that little bit of time, you know, I only, I've only used this camera for about a week or two and then it's just been sitting on the shelf. That's, that's kind of the unfortunate nature of YouTube videos, you know? it's. You've got to have a video up every week, so that entire week you're only using one camera, you know, you're shooting the sample photos and if the camera does video, you're filming all the sample videos and stuff like that. And once that video is finished and edited and uploaded, well, now you've got to move on to the very next camera, you know, you don't really have a whole lot of time to spend with them. But having said that though, uh, what little bit of time I have had with the D60, I do actually like it a lot. Now the next camera in the Nikon collection is one of my all-time favorite cameras and it's one of my all-time cheapest cameras as well, the Nikon D50. I got this camera, I think about like two years ago. This is another one that I bought for a YouTube video. I literally paid 30 bucks for this camera. Also, another camera that has a CCD sensor. The D50 was one of those cameras that just shocked me. I mean, I thought I was buying this just so that I could film a video and it's cheap and oh, okay, well, there you go. I had no idea that I was gonna fall in love with this camera and this would become easily one of my favorite cameras. Uh, the D50, you know, by the way, when I shot that Nikon D50 review, I did that whole thing with just this kit lens, this 18 to 55. You know, this is the kit lens that actually came with the Nikon D5000 back in 2009. Uh, but yeah, it was funny, like just this $30 camera and an old kit lens from 2009. And literally every time I was pressing the shutter button and I was looking at the image on the back of the camera, I was just like, Oh my god, you know, I was genuinely kind of blown away by by just how good the images look. Like, even when it was simple things, like just everyday things, like a picture of cats or something, which shocking, I know it's a theme on this channel, but even then, the colors just look so different from everything else that I was using, especially like every modern camera that I was using. The D50 just had this whole vibe that, I don't know, man, when you take into consideration that 
it only costs 30 bucks and it looks that good with a kit lens, you kind of get a sense of why this is one of my all-time favorite cameras. I mean, I would argue this is probably one of the best values out there. But having said that, there actually is a greater value than the D50, and that's this, the Nikon D200. Uh, I ended up buying this Nikon D200 also for a YouTube video about two years ago. I paid $60 for it. I got it from that seller uh, Roberts on eBay. That's If you buy used cameras a lot, if you're a camera collector, you know Roberts. That's one of those popular sellers on eBay. I think they're in like Indiana or somewhere. But um, the D200 is just a dream come true for me. You know, for one, this is a camera that I couldn't afford the first time around. I didn't have that kind of money. I didn't have a few thousand bucks. But now, you know, at 60 bucks, I'm like, yeah, of course, I'll give that a try. The body style is a much more professional style. It's magnesium alloy. It's really well made. And you've got all these customizable buttons and dials and stuff. And on top of all of that, the ergonomics are some of the best ergonomics I've ever felt. Like, this camera just feels so good in the hand. And of course, like so many of these other ones, the Nikon D200 is one of those 10 megapixel CCD sensors, and the image quality coming out of this camera is just phenomenal. Like I've said about some of the other ones is, it just looks different, you know? I hate comparing it to film because that's become too trendy nowadays, and I'm tired of everyone saying that Every f***ing older camera looks like film, man. Hey man, look at the look at this $5 point and shoot I bought at the thrift store. It looks just like film. It's like, yeah, no it doesn't. This, as someone who shot film for like 30 something years, yeah, it really does kind of look like film and it looks amazing. You know, it's funny, the D200 is one of those cameras that I fell so much in love with this camera that I put off reviewing it for two years because I felt like Whatever review I did, it just wasn't gonna be good enough for this camera. It just wasn't gonna do it justice. But eventually I did, you know, kind of have people asking because they knew that I had this camera like, hey man, why haven't you posted that review? So eventually I just had to give in and like review it. Um, but yeah, this, I like this camera so much that I kind of find myself looking on eBay all the time, like almost rebuying it, buying it again and buying it again because you know, this shutter, I mean, it's only gonna last so long, and then once that's gone, I, I still want another D200 to be able to take pictures with. You know, I want a backup one. I want a backup camera. I want a backup D200. Yeah, like, the D200 for me has become one of those cameras that... I love this camera so much that it really is just one of my go-to cameras. I mean... And that's coming from a camera collector's perspective with, you know, Canon, Sony, Nikon, Panasonic, Olympus, Samsung, whoever, whatever. You know, there's a ton of cameras in my office. Having said that, this is one of the main cameras that I find myself grabbing all on a regular basis. Like, I just love this camera so much. Uh, anyway, this is just a quick little rainy day video. And by the way, let me guys know if you're interested in this sort of thing, because, you know, we can do one of these for Canon, Sony, Olympus, Panasonic, whatever, you know. It's a pretty decent collection at this point. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I got for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.